I'm going to break down all the very exciting new info we've just picked up about Spider-Man 2 over the last few days for you, so you are fully up to date with what's going on with this game before launch. I've also already played it, thanks to a very kind invitation from PlayStation, so I'm pretty pumped to share more exclusive info for you in this video as well. But let's first start with some general overview details that are very easily missed, but I think you'd like to know. Firstly, this game will take up a minimum of 98 gigabytes on your PS5, according to the official PS5 limited edition console retail box so make sure you've got enough space before pre-downloads go live in a couple weeks time secondly Aaron Jason Espinosa the senior community manager confirmed very recently that you can upgrade the digital deluxe edition of the game and get all of the digital bonuses that come with it if you own a physical copy that said no price has been stated on what that is going to cost you but I'd say expect around an extra ten dollars or so if you do want to upgrade thirdly we've got some confirmation finally on graphical quality as the creative director Brian Interhar kindly confirmed to me in person that there is a fidelity mode setting that runs the game at a native 4K and 30 FPS graphical quality with a performance mode confirmed by Mike Fitzgerald, the core technology director to run at an upscaled 4K level with 60 FPS as well as ray tracing being active, meaning you get even better visuals in a performance mode at a higher frame rate. So good news for all of us there when it comes to this game. Now, no story spoilers here in this video, but there is some new narrative info released by the team in the last couple of days which I think is important for you to be aware of as it gives you more of an idea of what to expect going into the game. Firstly this game picks up nine months after the events of Miles Morales with Peter adjusting to his life after Aunt May's death and reconnecting with his best friend Harry Osborn where we'll also be able to visit Aunt May's house by the way which was just recently confirmed as well. Additionally the vice president and creative director at Marvel Games Bill Roseman describes this game as like the Empire Strikes Back in Star Wars as it gets very dark throughout the whole narrative and I could definitely feel that whilst playing in the black suit as Peter with my playtest as he is insanely aggressive and reckless with his animations when in combat and during story cutscenes but we can still use the symbiote powers with any suit while we play through the story by the way so you don't need to have the black suit equipped to use all of your abilities. We can also experience the game by playing quests that are specific to Peter, Miles and both of them together across the city as well as being able to switch between them almost instantly in game to complete those quests, which I experienced firsthand and was really impressed by. It was kind of like half a second, pretty much instantly, to be honest with you. On top of that, I just want to mention here that J. Jonah Jameson returns as the chief of the Daily Bugle with Mary Jane working for him, just like in the comics, which I can't wait for because if he's anything like how J.K. Simmons portrayed him in the films, then that would be awesome. Now, let's go through some key exploration and map details together here, starting with the size, because it is twice as big as the previous two games and even with my short time with the game last week you can quickly get around it all by utilizing the web wings which allows you to ride the air currents and tunnels around the city at a serious speed and the great thing about them is that it's easy to transition between swinging and gliding it was really satisfying to do in game i'm looking forward to seeing what you think of it when you get your hands on it additionally we're going to break down the suit shortly but each spider suit will also have its uniquely designed set of web wings which is a crazy amount of detail when you really think Think about it and if you combine these wings with the slingshots on top of the buildings you are going to be able to traverse immense distances in this game very quickly speaking of which you can actually fast travel in this game of course but you'll need to complete enough activities or side quests in that region to then unlock it and when you do you can then immediately fast travel to anywhere specific in that area which is a great feature with Aaron Jason Espinosa the community manager also recently stating on Twitter I think it was like yesterday at the time of recording that you can glide across the water similar to Sunset Overdrive if you played that game so I can't wait to try that out as well because I wasn't actually able to do that during my playtest. now when you are exploring the world your new augmented reality spidey lenses will allow you to have a look at all the activities in your immediate vicinity that you can complete as you can kind of see here. Incidentally, I'm going to run you through what each one of these map icons means very swiftly from my in-game notes as well as a bit of educated guesswork. So let's pause here and zoom in here together as this is a Craven Talon drone where we'll need to follow it closely with our web wings and download its data to prevent Craven from finding others in the city to hunt and kill. Above that, we have a set of orange rocks that could have something to do with the villain, the 
Sandman, as the team have already said that we can expect new enemies in this game, with the camera icon being a photo opportunity, of course, which rewards you with XP and tech parts, and more on that shortly, because beneath that, we have what looks to be a Prowler questline icon of sorts, specifically for Miles, and perhaps something similar to the previous games to collect rap music or USB music sticks throughout the world. To the left of that, we have the player icon and the wanted icon, which represents crime world events to proactively resolve or come across in game. But let's now move north. And this looks to me that it could be a specific quest for Peter, as this icon could perhaps be referring to Mysterio, as we saw him in the trailer, as you can see here, with this icon over to the right of the map being our Spidey main quest, and this blue Spider-Man icon to the south being a specific friendly neighborhood Spider-Man mission, which either Peter or Miles can do, whoever you prefer to play with essentially at that specific time. And I nearly forgot actually the spider icon here on the menu is the spider bot side activities, which I had the pleasure of doing at the event where you'll need to collect them all for an unknown reward, which I'm looking forward to finding out what that is. Now, if you are enjoying the breakdown so far, please do leave a very swift like down below. So thanks very much for your support. But let's talk about combat now because there's a few cool changes here that you should know. Firstly, red incoming attacks are not dodgeable, meaning you have to parry this attack at just the right time, otherwise you're gonna take a hefty amount of damage, which took me a little bit of time to get used to, as in most single player games, red from an enemy essentially means dodge out the way, but not here in Spider-Man 2. On top of that, the blue indicator around the enemies cannot be parried, they can only be dodged, but the white and yellow incoming attacks can be parried or dodge, so a few <laughs> reactive combat buttons to master here in this new game. And this is all for a reason, because Doug Sheehan, the senior programming director at Insomniac Studios, said each boss fight responds to each Spider-Man ability, which not only makes for a unique boss fight, but they end up countering a lot of our moves. So we're going to really need to understand these color-coordinated warnings quite early on in the game when it comes to offensive attacks, if we want to be successful. And I can directly attest to that, because the lizard absolutely nuked me a few times in that boss fight that was purely down to me not parrying the incoming red attacks at the right time. So something to be really conscious of here in this game. Now, since we're on the topic of villains, let's run through a few new highlights together because as I mentioned earlier, the developers have confirmed that there will be new side storylines involving brand new villains that haven't yet been seen in this particular Spider-Man universe. We of course have Mysterio, whom we also spoke about a minute ago, who is a former special effects artist and a illusionist who uses his talents to commit crimes, most recently played by Jake Gyllenhaal in the Far From Home Spider-Man movie, if you've watched that. In fact, this may be Mysterio playing tricks here in this scene, which is very interesting indeed. We also get a closer look at Yuri's Wraith here, who returns from the DLC expansion in the first Spider-Man game. And take a look at this here, actually, thanks to a great spot from Nika, because there is a fire emblem on this dude's apron, which also happens to be the same type of map icon, which we can also see here. And I reckon that may be the villain Butane from the animated Spider-Man freshman year series, who of course, loves his fire, so perhaps a minor mini boss for us to fight here in game. Also looking forward to that one. Now, another thing I'm also looking forward to are the gadgets and suit tech upgrades in this game. First of all, in the bottom left hand corner of our screen are the L1 Venom and electrical based abilities for Miles and Peter. But if we move over to the other side of the UI screen, we have gadgets such as the Upshot Web Rocket, which does some decent area damage, and the new Web Grabber tool that pulls all enemies together into one place so you can then blow them to pieces. We also have the return of the web shooter at the top right hand corner of your UI, which is still a very satisfying, albeit the most basic gadget to use in game. But what's important for you to know is that all of these gadgets can be upgraded and their effectiveness or use can actually be altered. So for example, the web grabber will also drop a concussion bomb in the area, stunning all targets after you use it, but only if you upgrade it by spending tech parts and rare tech parts, which you can collect by completing missions around the world. And they're also used as resources that we need to use to upgrade and alter our suits alongside hero tokens. And that is a great transition onto suits and that topic now really, because there are 65 suits in this game with original designs from the films, comics, and Spider-Man media over the generations, which you may be familiar with. These tech parts and hero tokens are used specifically to upgrade the suits that we like, so we can improve the health, damage, focus, and traversal stats on it, with traversal upgrades, by the way, also revealing 
tech crates on our mini map, which will also drop city tokens, which is a another consumable we can then use to craft more color and style options for our 65 Spider-Man suits with over 200 confirmed customizable options available to us. So yeah, there's lots of really good stuff here. And let's run through a few confirmed suits that we've had confirmed so far, such as the apocalyptic suit for you anarchists out there, or the stone monkey suit may be more your thing as it's heavily inspired by Chinese legends. Or perhaps you prefer this tactical suit with its inspiration coming from a futuristic Japan. And speaking of the future, maybe the 25th century suit is for you as it's described as featuring a ultra modern design with a fishbowl helmet, which is very interesting indeed. But something here you old school fans may like, such as Tobey Maguire's symbiote suit from the films here, as well as Marl's 10th anniversary suit and the Spider-Man Falcon suit with those awesome custom web wings on show here that you'll be able to collect in game. So just a flavor of some of the designs there and I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more. Now there's a few cool new settings and developments that you should also be aware of such as the SSD improvements in this game which means that each Spider-Man is able to travel three times faster in this game than previous games which is when you get these super swift aerial loading times that make the game way more immersive. They've also allowed an option to remove full damage in the game, which I saw in the settings menu. So you will have to reload a save if you decide to land on the ground after a 500 foot dive onto the concrete like it's nothing. You can also turn the game's speed down to 70, 50 and 30% if it's a little bit too fast for you and you're having a bit of difficulty early on in the game, as well as a variety of different accessibility features that are also becoming available and improved in this game with with Ryan Smith, the game director, also confirming that there will be 26 language options available for on-screen text with on-screen captions and audio descriptions included in the cinematics as well if you do want it. But since we're doing a full recap of everything Spider-Man 2 in the last couple of weeks, there's a couple of cool out-of-game releases I think you'd be interested to know, such as the Collector's Edition statue, which I saw in person, and is probably the most impressive thing I've ever seen in a game edition, so if you're considering it, I don't think you're gonna be disappointed there. Hot Toys is also releasing an official special edition of Peter in the black suit for a tasty $300, and it looks pretty impressive to me, alongside another statue of Peter in the advanced suit that we can also get in game for a $350 price tag, and Miles in his upgraded suit for $290 as well, with only 5,000 units in total being made. I also wanted to squeeze this cool Easter egg in here at the end of the video because I absolutely love them in video games. And at this point in the trailer, if I just pause here for you and zoom in, you can see the word Smythe International, which could be referring to Alistair Smythe, also known as the Spider Slayer, who dedicated his life to eliminating Spider-Man, creating a new generation of Spider Slayers to go and kill him. So that would be totally awesome to see in game if we do come across them, but we're just Gonna have to wait and see on that one. Now, if you are watching this far, I've got even more exclusive Spider-Man 2 content to discuss with you. So click the video on your screen right now and hopefully I'll see you there in just a second. Big thanks to Mill, Jess, Sarah and the PlayStation team and Nika for helping me with Spider-Man coverage. Coffee is on all of them and I'll see you in that next video.